so the, the well-controlled one, what we found was that with the higher protein, and as far as we could measure exactly the same calorie intake, the people on the higher protein, low carb, lost more total weight, more total fat, and less lean, and that stabilized their insulin and glycemic regulations and lowered their triglycerides across the board. So both groups lost weight. They were both on weight loss diets, yeah. but the protein people lost eight pounds more and almost all of it, you know, something like, you know, six and a half of it was fat. And one of the things that the dietitians who were running the study always came back is they said that the, the protein people were never talking about food and snacks, but the people on the high carb diet were always talking about being hungry and snacking. It definitely partitions the weight loss toward fat, protects muscle, malign tissue, definitely has higher satiety. We want weight loss, but we don't want people to lose any lean mass, especially if they're adults. If you're a 20 year old, it probably doesn't matter so much, but if you're older, you know, if you're beyond 40, it does matter. In the same period of time, an older adult in bed rest will lose four times as much muscle as a younger adult. It's, it's frightening how fast you can lose it. And if you're diligent and do weight training, you can begin to gain it back, but it's hard to ever get back to ground zero. All this leucine stuff, when does it really come into play? You know, is it as, it's not as important for a 20 year old as it is for a 60, but where's the middle ground? You know, where does it change? And I think it's a little like bone health. I think once you're, once you're 40, you're sort of on the back end of that and you need to be much more careful. Took 90 grams of protein and looked at it, distributed as three meals per day, 30, 30, 30 versus 10, 20, 60. Mm -hmm. uh, and we found that with the same amount of protein, the same overall diet, uh, you would have higher net protein synthesis with the distri distribution to breakfast. I think the first and last meals mm -hmm. are the key. Okay. But when you trigger mTOR, at that first meal, we know that it's still stimulated five hours later. Mm -hmm. So why do you need leucine for mTOR at lunch if it's still stimulated? You don't. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.